We have a special guest in town who just happened to be here and, and just sent me a text a couple days ago and he's like, I'm speaking. It wasn't a question, it was awesome. He's a former Daily Show producer, worked at The Onion, but mostly he's an activist and author that demands us to be better. Please welcome Baratunde Thurston. <laughs> ready to make America smart again. I come to you from Brooklyn, New York by way of science. Aerospace engineering is incredible. I want to first uh, just express appreciation for all of you for being here. You are beautiful, you are bold, and you are brilliant. These signs are amazing. I have seen some of the cleverest signs of my life. I want to give a shout out to what do we want evidence-based science. When do we want it? After peer review. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I want to show some love for a very simple sign. Geology rocks. You guys are killing it. It's a fun game. This is amazing. It's amazing. And then my favorite of the day, but I know there's thousands more. Knowing stuff is good. Why do I even have to march for this? Very, very beautiful. There's uh, a lot of people asking, how did we get to a place where Jared Kushner is our president? I think it's a great question. I think it's a great question. And the answer is always history, but I also think the answer is science. Show some love if you know who Isaac Newton is. Isaac Newton, for those who don't know, is the creator of CrossFit. And Isaac Newton tweeted out on Snapchat the other day, uh, third law of physics, Newton's third law. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. I think those same rules apply to our politics in this nation. To every brilliant, competent, first black president, there is an idiot white supremacist president. It's just science, yo. It's just physics. It's just CrossFit. So I am here because I had a mother who helped me be here. My mother was born in 1940, Washington, D.C., when nobody wanted to be black. Black people didn't even want to be black. White people hadn't gotten around to it yet. And she did not have a college degree. She raised my sister and me on her own. She was a domestic worker, she was a secretary, but she ultimately became a computer programmer for the federal government. She was Black Girls Code before there was a Black Girls Code, right? And as a child, I didn't know what a computer programmer did, but I discovered one day what that meant. See, I would get home alone in my job, do homework, don't watch TV. So of course, I did the opposite, but I would keep an eye out the window because I was smart. And as I saw my mother approach, I would turn off the TV, I'd go sit at the kitchen table, I'd start doing my homework. And my mother would walk in the house, and she'd walk over to the television, and she'd put her hand on the television. Some of you also had my mother. And she would feel the heat generated by her lying son. And that's when I realized computer programmers are wizards sent from the future to deny cartoons like DuckTales and Dennis the Menace to lonely children in the hood. See, my mother had a hypothesis that her son was lying to her, and then she tested it. And then, like an idiot, I offered a chance for her to repeat that experiment because she was a scientist. And the last thing I want to stress today is that we are here in many cases in opposition to a dark orange cloud we feel descending on our nation. But that's not the only reason to be here. Because regardless of what's going on in the halls of Congress or the halls of the White House, science itself has more work to do. Science alone doesn't fix things. And who makes science is important. I am here because my mother can help make some science. 
and in this the Bay Area, the Yay Area, we should constantly be questioning who's making the science and technology that defines our future? Who's benefiting from the jobs and economic opportunities that define the reality in which we will live? So yes to resistance in the true scientific sense, but also yes to inclusivity and creation in the full expansive sense of the diplomacy of this nation. The last thing I want to say is to paraphrase the words of Niels Bohr. Can we get up for Niels Bohr? Right. Created hot yoga. Niels Bohr has a quote about what science ultimately is. And to paraphrase, he essentially says, science is the gradual elimination of prejudice. Scientists question their assumptions. We look at the world and say, what else is there? And we are constantly chipping away at prejudice because we are not afraid to ask ourselves questions. So let us all continue to ask ourselves questions. Let's be scientific in our approach to expanding the promises of justice. And let's turn up this march. I'm Baratunde Thurston.